Somebody shout hallelujah. Provisions and appropriations. In other words, if I were to have a, maybe a second title, I would say, you have already got it. Just say to your neighbor, you have already got it. When we talk of provisions, we are talking of things that God has made available to you by his grace. These are the things that Jesus purchased for you by his body on the cross. These are provisions. Now, appropriations is how you, by faith, begin to receive those things which God has provided. In other words, appropriations is how you begin to receive those provisions or make them physically manifest in your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. All right, let me take off this jacket. I put it on to honor the communion. So now that we are done with communion, hey, it's uh, cold in here. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Now, the message that I'm going to preach today is going to lay the foundation of what God wants to make manifest in your life in 2024. In other words, I am already in 2024. I'm already there. And I'm speaking from there, preparing you in 2023 so that when you arrive to where I am, you are able to navigate this year properly. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody is getting lost right there. The Bible says Jotham became mighty because he prepared himself before the Lord. In other words, for you to do exploits, I'm not saying God is not going to bless you and do things in the remaining days. But for you to do exploits in any field of life, you have to be thoroughly prepared for them. Somebody shout hallelujah. So let us get into the scriptures. Ephesians 1, 15 to 19. The Bible says, Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, 16, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Making mention of you in my prayers. Here, Paul the Apostle is praying for the believers, the universal body of Christ, you and me included. How are you going to pray if you are going to pray for people that are going to come 2,000 years later? What kind of a prayer? Were you going to pray for them to have cars and houses and money and uh, all the nice things in the world? What, what kind of a prayer were you, were you going to make? So today we're going to be looking at the prayer which Paul made being inspired by the Holy Spirit for you and me 2,000 years later. All right? He says, making mention of you in my prayers, verse 17. Let us see what he's praying for. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know. Jesus. Listen, he's not praying for you so that you may get. He's praying for you so that you may know. In other words, you already got it. You just don't know. So he's not praying for you to get. He's praying for you to know. If Petrus Mutepe deposits 10 million in your bank account, the right prayer to pray is not uh, give me money, oh Lord. It's to show me the bank card. Where is the card? Many of you, 2,000 years ago, Jesus has deposited everything you need in life. Deposited everything you need, you would ever need to make it in life. And that is why here, Paul says that you may know what is the hope of his calling. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So there are riches of the glory. Of his inheritance inside of you right now. There are riches. So you are not a poor person. No, you are not hearing what I'm saying. You are not a poor person. Check it out and say, hey, I'm not poor. Eh? I don't care how much money you have in your bank account. 
According to the word, you are not poor. Your bank account may be speaking the opposite, but we are not looking at that. We are looking at what the word says. Oh my God. In the saints. In, in you. Ayaba. He says, I need you to know that you got these things. I need you to know that a believer is a heaver. A believer is not a lecker. You lack nothing. Somebody shout, I lack nothing. And verse 19, my goodness, this is full blast. The Bible says, what is the exceeding greatness of his power? I wanted to know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us what we believe. There is a power, there is a great power that is released, that has been poured upon us who believe. According to the working of his mighty power. What is the exceeding? That word exceeding is the word hyperbulon in Greek. Which means beyond the mark, beyond the normal. Am I talking to somebody? I need help there at the back. Hallelujah. This is beyond normal. This is extraordinary. This is beyond human comprehension. Somebody shout hallelujah. So there is power that is abnormal that has been poured into your life. And he says the greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working. The word working here is the Greek word energia. Energia means this is life giving power. Child of God, you are carrying life giving power. Energizing power. That is why we can be tired but after a few minutes of speaking in tongues, all of a sudden we are energized. It's because we are utilizing the power that is already in us. And he says, according to the working of his mighty power, mighty. Oh my God, this is, you know, Paul is a, he play, he's a wordsmith. He plays with words. The word mighty is the word iskus. Iskus means force. Hmm. In other words, the working, the energy of his iskus, force. So you carry force. You can compel things with, with the force that you are carrying on the inside of you. And it says, mighty power. That word power there is the Greek word dunamis, which means a bomb. Explosion. In other words, you are carrying a bomb on the inside of you. Hallelujah. And all this, Paul is explaining the power that rose Jesus from the dead. He's actually saying to you that the power that rose Jesus from the dead is on the inside of you. The same power that my goodness, on the third day, entered the grave, entered the body of Jesus and brought him back to life. That power lives on the inside of you. Amen. And Paul says, I need you to know this. I want you to know this. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I need you to know this. Shake your neighbor and say, I need you to know this. Paul says, I need you to know. You have already got it. You are not a lacquer. You have already got it. Oh my God. I'm not sure how we're going to do this. I have a, 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 a dog or picture that I gave the media team. Are you able to project that picture here on the screen in the front at least? I need somebody to look at this picture. I need you to see it. If you have data, you can just go online. I believe on our service online, you should be able to see it. Media team, are you able to make that uh, picture come here on the screen that is here on the stage. Uh, media, are you able to respond? <laughs> because I'm waiting for a response. In fact, ah, perfect. Oh, it disappeared. It came and left. It was here. All right, somebody, Mr. Mangana, can you help me? Can you just turn this screen and carry it maybe? Just point it to the people. I need you to see this because this is a very important part of my message. I don't, don't, don't take a picture of this one. Hey, we don't want uh, uh, the people to see that the screens were not working today. <laughs> are, are you able to see? Can you just lift it up a bit? Just so that those that are at the back, they can see. Those that can't see, you can just get into a YouTube 
CLM Midrand, see it online. Hallelujah. Are you able to see that? Yeah, take it up, lift it up. Yeah. Are you able to see that? Are you able to see what is happening here? What, what is happening? All right. Thank you, thank you Pastor Muriel. What, what is happening here? It's a dog that is chasing its tail. Whose tail is this? Now, the dog is trying to get the tail that it already has. This tail belongs to this dog, but this dog is trying to chase. It thinks maybe it's not his. You can put it down. Thank you so much. Let us clap hands for Mr. Mangena. He's a true man, very strong man. Hallelujah. Africa. <laughs> So this is the story with many of us believers. We are chasing what we already have. We are running after things that already belong to us. And this message is going to open your eyes, my goodness, and empower you to appropriate all the things that God has made available in your life. So like the dog on the screen, most Christians, they spend their entire lives chasing something they already have. The biggest problem for most Christians is not that God has not provided, but the fact that they don't know that he has provided. And should they know that he has provided, they doubt. And should they not doubt that he has provided, they then, they then confess negativity in their hearts. And as a result, there is a delay in the manifestation of things that have already been provided. Deuteronomy 7.17 in the New King James Version, God is saying to you, if you should say in your heart, these nations are greater than I, how can I dispossess them? If you say in your heart, you're not even speaking with your mouth, in your heart that these nations are greater than I, how can I dispossess them? God is saying to you that if you speak doubt, you confess doubt, you confess negativity, about the things that I've promised you, how should I make them manifest? Here in Deuteronomy, I need you to understand something. Deuteronomy is written by Moses when he's about to die. Perhaps it might have taken two or three days after he wrote Deuteronomy, the man went to be with the Lord. He's giving them instructions of how they need to go and possess the land. He's giving them a guideline of how they are going to possess the land. And when he's giving them the guideline, he's showing them that once you start doubting that God has given you the land, he has given you, he has promised you one, two, three, then you are disempowering yourself from receiving that. Somebody shout hallelujah. You see, many Christians, ladies and gentlemen, are always asking the Lord to do something. Oh Lord, bless me. Oh Lord, heal me. Oh Lord, deliver me. Oh Lord, prosper me. When in truth, they are seeking what they've already been given. Many of us are chasing things that we, my goodness. Now I understand why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things that are already given unto you, you my goodness, they will be appropriated into your life. There is nowhere in the Bible whereby we are told to seek the things of the world. We're always told to seek God. He's a rewarder of they that diligently seek him, not things. Somebody shout hallelujah. So he has given you all things. Somebody shout I have all things. Second Peter 1.3, the Bible says, According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. He has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Child of God, you lack nothing. And I need you to begin to have this mentality that I lack nothing. It has, it has already been provided. God has already given it. You need to have this consciousness and be assured of what I'm saying. Somebody shout hallelujah. Many believers believe that God can do anything. But they just don't believe that he has done very much in the past. They just believe maybe he can do anything, but he has not done anything for me. Listen to me. God has done so much for you. On that cross, everything that you need to, to make it in life was made available. And as we go deep in this, you are going to understand me. The book of Ephesians, ladies and gentlemen, where we have read, 
was written from an entirely different perspective. How would you pray for people who will live after you 2,000 years to come? Paul is praying for the church, which is you and me, to know but not to have. He's praying for the church that they may know what God has already given them. Not that they need to be given, they already have. He wants them to know what they already have. Everything has been accomplished in Christ and given to the born again believer. It's both already done and it's already yours. A victorious Christian is not seeking victory, but rather enforces victory that is already won through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Child of God, you are enforcing. You are not seeking. Shake your neighbor say you are enforcing. You are not seeking. 2 Corinthians 2.14 The Bible says God always causes us to triumph in Christ. In other words, you can be fighting a battle right now, but the outcome is already predicted. You are going to win. The outcome is that you will win. Am I talking to somebody? Oh my God, it does not matter which sphere of life, your career, your whatever, your business, the outcome is that you will win. Oh my God, somebody shout, I will win. We aren't trying to win a battle. We are coming from a battle that is already being won. Jesus has conquered and we are enforcing his conquest. He has conquered and we are enforcing his conquest. He has conquered and we are forcing his conquest. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh my God, I bought something the other day in pick and pay and I forgot it. I don't know how. So a few days later, I realized that the thing that I bought in pick and pay, I did not collect it. A, 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 a good part of me said, just let it go. The thing costed 85 rands. Hey, but another part of me said, no ways. You have already paid for it. My friend, I picked up the phone. I'm like, is this pick and pay? Can I speak to the chief, whoever that is in charge here? Yeah, hey, they're like, hey, hey, who are you? I'm like, hey, I'm a very serious person. Give me whoever that is in charge. I'm like, look, on this day I bought something. You did not put it in my trolley. And I want it back. And like, oh no, no, that is not possible. Hey, I'm like, no way. It's not, it's not possible. I paid for it. I have the sleep. Some a thought came to me that you can look at your cameras and everything. They decided to go and call the manager and everything. They realized that somewhere in the security room. One of the tellers brought what I bought that somebody forgot this thing on the shelves or we forgot to pack it, however. And they said, okay, give us a few minutes. They checked and they called me that, ah, sir, we just want to apologize. Indeed, your whatever thing that you bought has been found. In the, in the preparation of this message. And the Lord showed me that, you see, this is what many Christians do. They are apologetic about something that has already been paid for. That it is okay, I will just let my healing pass and I will continue to drink medicine. The devil is a liar. Oh my God, I want what Jesus has made available for me. I want my blessing. Am I talking to somebody? If he said I'm blessed going in, I want to be blessed. Oh my God, I'm not backing off, I'm not letting go. I'm going for what the Bible says has been provided. Provisions and appropriations. I want to appropriate the provisions of redemption. Everything that was made available for me, I want it. I want my healing and I want it now. One time my daughter was sick, very sick. You know, terribly sick. And, my, and she was with, my, with, her, with my mom in Zanin. My mom is trying to do whatever she can do. Taking her to the best specialist. And this thing was just not going away. Oh my God. And I drove there with my wife and I went to see the child. And, I, and my goodness, I remember something, you know, just came alive inside of me. That by his stripes, she was healed. My God. You know, I held the child and I rebuked that sickness. I rebuked, paralyzed, destroyed that, that sickness. In a few days, that ailment left the child. And my mother calls me and she does not, you know, when my mother calls me, it depends. The, her calls are different. 
when it's a, a mother to son call, she says, hey, my boy, how are you? But when it's a spiritual call, she says, apostle. So when she said apostle, I knew that now it's a man of God to, to woman. It's a different, you know. <laughs> and she's like, apostle, man of God, you are a man of God. I say, yes, amen. I know that. What, what is happening, mom? She says, that child that you prayed for, your own child, uh, that sickness is gone. I've not given her medication for some time. And she said, this thing, it all, all, it, all it needed was just prayer. And as I'm preaching, it, it's just coming to my mind right now that there are things we welcome uh, because we don't want to enforce what Jesus has already made available for us. Am I talking to somebody? You see, hear me and hear me by the Holy Spirit. Prayer is not forcing God to respond. In fact, prayer is not God responding to your request. Ah, my God. Prayer is you responding to the provisions of God. I am responding to the things that God has already made available for me. Prayer is not you forcing God to move. He has already moved 2,000 years ago. Prayer is appropriating all the things that God moved to establish in my life. Am I talking to people? So it has been made available. And we want it. Am I talking to somebody? In other words, let me show you how we pray. You're not praying that, oh God, let's say you're praying for money. Oh God, you are giving everybody money. Even the people that are not born again. Even the comrades. You are giving them money. What about me, oh Lord? Wrong prayer. Let me show you how, how, how you pray. Oh Lord, you said in your word that you shall supply my needs according to your riches in glory. I appropriate those riches by faith. I receive every wealth that you have made available for me on the cross by faith. Amen. You'll see manifestation very, very, very shortly. Many of us, we complain and that is why we remain in our situations. If you complain, you remain. If you praise, you'll be raised. The children of Israel, the reason why they remained for 40 years in the wilderness is because they complained. Am I talking to somebody? Somebody shout a strong hallelujah. So we are not trying to win anything. Jesus has won it 2,000 years ago. He has conquered. We are enforcing. It has been paid for. We are claiming things that have been paid for. Romans 8.37 in the GNT, the Bible says, no, in all these things, we have complete victory. We have, my goodness, we have complete victory. We are not going to have complete victory. We have it right now. Somebody shout hallelujah. We have complete victory, present tense. Victory in every corner of my life, I got it. Victory upon my protection, physical protection, I got victory. Victory against spiritual attacks, whether you come physically or spiritually, I got victory. Over my finances, I got victory. The Bible says we have complete victory. We have, not we are, not, we are, not we are going to have, we have now. In the second we have, somebody shout, I have complete victory. Now as believers, we are not trying to get something from God. But we are fighting to see the full manifestation of what's already ours in Christ. Deuteronomy 2.24 says, Then God said, Now cross Anon Valley. Look, I have given you the land of King Sihon. Are you seeing it right there? God says, I have given you the land of King Sihon. I have given you, already I have given you. Somebody shout, he has given me. I've given you the land of King Sihon, the Amorite. He is the king of Heshbon. Listen to this. You must go and fight against him. Why are we fighting? We are fighting because it is given. We are not fighting so he can give. We are fighting because this has been given. Look at the last part. It says, attack him. And take his land for yourself. For yourself, Attack him and take. In other words, if you don't attack, you can't take. 
The Bible says that from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent shall take it by force. Am I told somebody? So we got to take. It says the land is yours. He has given it to you, but you need to fight. It is yours, but you got to fight. Why? You are fighting a stubborn devil who will, not, who will not let go of your things easily. The devil will not let go of your healing easily. You got to fight. You got to keep going, understanding that this land is mine. This business is mine. This breakthrough is mine. This job is mine. This door is mine. It has been given unto me. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh my God. One time this thing happened in our office. Somebody was put to be an acting uh, senior. And when the person was acting, they went and hired one to resume the responsibility. And when they hired them now a person who should take over the, 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 the role, the one that was acting refused to de-act, if there is a such a word. So he wanted to continue acting when there is a person that has been hired. And it was just causing confusion because the actor will call a meeting and the, the real one will call a meeting and now you are caught in between. You are not sure which meeting to attend. And the actor was very arrogant, very brutal, very corrosive. And the one that has assumed the role, very humble, and I remember I took him to a corner. I'm like, hey, Muna, you are too humble and you are causing problems for all of us. You need to stand. This is your role, man. Can't you see that uh, that man is bothering us because of you? Take responsibility. <laughs> this is your post. And the guy said, hey, even me, I'm afraid of that one. Ah. <laughs> then, uh, how do you protect us who are below you when you are supposed to be the one taking the responsibility? Listen to this. This is, what, this is a story of many believers. The role is yours. It has been provisioned. That other one is just, my God, <laughs> it's an actor. It's not the real thing. But you are, you are afraid of approaching the actor. That Mr. Actor, this is my role. The contract backs me up. The CEO backs me up. HR backs me up. The payslip backs me up. Everything backs me up. Child of God, I'm preaching this to inspire you, to provoke a holy anger on the inside of you. It cannot be business as usual. No, it cannot be business as usual. In the book of Ecclesiastes, the Bible says that there is an error under the sun. It says servants are on horses, princes are walking barefoot. There is an error. There is a displacement. Today I came here to preach that we are correcting the error. Today you are taking your place. Today you are going to your God-ordained place. I rebuke the spirit of fear. Uh, today you are going to approach your God-given place. You are going to walk in your destiny. I came here to tell you that you are a child of destiny and you are destiny's child and you are a survivor. Child of God, you got to go and possess everything the Lord says belongs to you. You got to possess every blessing. I want even the little things. Because sometimes we are not, we are not afraid of uh, engaging the big things. You had an agreement with the bank that, okay, for this car, you are going to debit 9,000 in my account. And they debit 12,000. I tell you the truth, you will call them without hesitating. Yeah. It doesn't matter how humble you are because this is, a, this is big money we are talking about. But when it is the case of 85 friends, like I was telling you earlier, that I forgot in pick and pay. Some of us, we are able to let go of our blessings. I want every blessing. Every, every blessing, my God. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. I was talking to another man of God, fellow man of God, and we are just talking. And, he, and we are talking, you know, he, 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 he's, uh, how can I say, as servants of God, we, we, we interpret life differently. He's a big man, big man of God. And I'm like, you know what? You see, you big man of God, here's the challenge. You close certain doors for yourselves. Hear me and hear me well. You see, I say, me, I'm a small man of God. I don't have a problem. If somebody wants to give me 20 rand, I take it and I dance and I, th and I thank the Lord. Yeah. And there will be 20 people that give me 20 rands. At the end of the day, I have something visible of those small 20 rands. You, you want big, big, big things. 
<laughs> You're not hearing what I'm saying. I'm saying that we, we should not let go even of the small blessings. Shake and never say even the small blessing. So it's like, hey, yeah. I'm like, yeah, people will give me 100, 100, 100, 100, 100. At the end of the day, I have something visible. You, when people need to give you something, the first thing that, hey, is this 100,000 enough? Hey, Shanda Baya. Oh, somebody's not hearing the preacher. Shake and never say, listen, in your back. Child of God, there are even little things that God has provided for you. Even headache, the healing has been provided. Yesterday, I had a headache, my goodness. As I was praying and fasting, the headache was mooring me like nobody's business. And Pella, when you are fasting, you can't drink panado. And I'm trying to read the Bible. My God. And you can see the temperature. <laughs> temperature, fasting, Bible, headache. My God. I'm reading the Bible. This very same message. And something came into my spirit. That apply the way that you are preparing. <laughs> Even before you preach it, apply it. I went and I took juice. And I began to speak to the juice. That dear juice, before I drink you. Every element of paracetamol, I put it in you. Paracetamol is panado. I put spiritual panado inside of you in the name of Jesus. Compral. And compral is very fast. I'm like, I compral you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I, I, I grandpa you now. Hey, my friend, it didn't take two minutes. After drinking that juice, yalla, headache disappeared. Even now, the headache is gone. All those 20 rands that you spend buying Panado, if you can count them by the end of the year, you have spent a lot of money. So we want to see what God has provided even in the little things. Am I talking to the church? Somebody shout hallelujah. So hear me. You are not trying to get healed. You are fighting because you are already healed and the devil is trying to steal your healing because he comes to kill, steal and destroy. In 1 Peter 2.24, the Bible says, by whose stripes you were healed. Past tense. In other words, your healing has been provided for already. Your healing has been provided for. My God, my God. Your healing has been provided for. I don't care how long you have been in that sickness. Your healing has been provided for. As your healing has been provided for. Your deliverance has been provided for. Am I talking to somebody? Somebody shout hallelujah. We are not begging God to prosper us financially. We are fighting the good fight of faith to see the prosperity that's already been given to us manifest. Am I talking to somebody? We are not begging God. A child of God is not a beggar. Shout, I'm not a beggar. You are not begging God. When we pray, some people think that we are begging God. No, we are not begging God. He has already made these things available for us. Oh my God, can I shock you? 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse number 9. The Bible says that for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes, he became poor. That you, through his poverty. Oh, you are prophetic. I was about to call you. Hallelujah. Oh my God, this is good. I've never seen this in my entire life. He, he became poor that you, through his poverty, might be rich. Ah, yeah, bah, yeah. Jesus, but are you hearing what, what this verse is saying? He became poor. That you, through his poverty, my God, this is, we are not talking about spiritual wealth or sp spiritual poverty, physical poverty. If you can study the Bible, 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 is talking about money. So here the Bible is saying that he became poor financially so that you, through his poverty, might be rich. So I reject poverty. Even the smallest dimension of poverty, I reject it. My God, I can't be poor. Oh, somebody's not hearing the preacher. You see, the spirit of poverty will continue to harass you when you don't understand this truth. I cannot be poor because Jesus became poor so that I, by his poverty, I might be blessed. Child of God, you are blessed. I say you are blessed. I say you are blessed. You are not going to be blessed. You are blessed. 
He became poor so that you by his poverty may be rich. Somebody shout hallelujah. You are rich in all things. Somebody shout I'm rich in all things. Oh as I'm closing this thing. We are not begging God to bless us. Because he has already commanded his blessing upon us. I might talk to somebody. Ephesians 1.3 the Bible says he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. I, I am blessed. Shout I am blessed. Oh my God, you are not saying it like you believe it. Shout, I am blessed. Oh my God, shout it stronger. I am blessed. Oh my God, shout, I am blessed. Shout, I am blessed. No, what, what do we mean by this? We are saying that, my goodness, the blessing is not the physical manifestation of things. The blessing is what God has laid upon your head. There is an anointing upon your head called the blessing. The blessing is an anointing to progress. It is an anointing to prosper. It is an anointing to be successful. It is an anointing to climb up levels. And the word of God says that he has blessed you with all, all spiritual blessings. In other words, that blessing is upon you now. It's not going to be upon you. It is upon you now. Somebody shout hallelujah. You see when God made man in the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 28. The Bible says and God blessed him. In other words the first words you had as a human being after God had created you was that you are blessed. The very first time when God opened his mouth towards you he said you are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. The enemy tried to frustrate this in Genesis chapter number 3. But Jesus came and reversed what the enemy had done. And re-put the blessing upon you. Somebody shout I am blessed. Oh my God shout it stronger that I am blessed. So you are not trying to get blessed. You are blessed already. Oh my God you are not trying to get elevated. You are elevated already. You are not trying to become something better. You are something better already. What you are doing, you are enforcing what has already been proficient. What has been proficient, I want to see it manifest physically. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh my God, as I'm closing. Now hear me as I'm knitting my message together. Through believing and acknowledging we've already got it. And it's already done. Talking like we've already got it. And acting like we've already got it. That is how we appropriate what the Lord has provided. Through believing. Somebody say through believing. And acknowledging. So you got to believe and acknowledge that you already got it. I already got this blessing. I already got this breakthrough. I already got this healing. When we begin to do like this and we talk like it and we act like it, what we are doing in the realm of the spirit, we are appropriating. Somebody say appropriating. You are allowing it to flow from the spiritual realm into your life. You see, the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, is a book of provisions and appropriations. It's a book whereby God shows you provisions and how to appropriate them into your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let me give you this last scripture as I'm closing. Philemon chapter 1 verse number 6. Philemon 1 verse number 6 in the KJV. The Bible says that the communication of thy faith may be effectual. Uh, you, you may pick it up now. That the communication of your faith may be effectual. Paul is talking to Philemon or praying for Philemon. He's saying that so that your faith can work. So that your faith can produce results. And now he shows him how. He says by the acknowledging. In other words, miracles begin when you begin to acknowledge. Breakthroughs begin when you begin to acknowledge. Open doors begin when you begin to acknowledge. Increases begin when you begin to acknowledge. Turnarounds are provoked when you begin to acknowledge. The Bible says by the acknowledging, pick it up one more time. By the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. In other words, you must begin to acknowledge every good thing which is on the inside of you in Christ Jesus. In other words, my goodness, miracles begin when you begin to say, I am blessed. 
and I can never be cursed. God says that when you begin to do that, physically things begin to turn around in your life. When you begin to say, I can never be sick another day of my life because by his stripes I was healed. Sickness cannot live in such a body. Somebody shout hallelujah. When you understand that Abraham's blessings are yours, there is no way poverty can harass you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout acknowledge. So when we begin to acknowledge that it's there already, God says it begins to work. When I acknowledge, so prayer is me acknowledging what God has provided. Prayer is not trying to force God to do anything because he has already done it. I already got it. The reason why I want my money is because I already got it. The reason why I want my breakthrough is because I already got it. The reason why I want my healing is because I already got it. The reason why I want my new job is because I already got it. The reason why I want my promotion is because I already got it. The reason why I want a bigger house is because I already got it. The reason why this car is no longer giving me peace is because I know I already got a bigger one. I already got it. I acknowledge that 2,000 years on the cross, Jesus has made things available for me. Somebody shout hallelujah. By the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. In other words, God is saying acknowledge only the good things. If I see something that is funny in my life, I don't acknowledge it. You're not hearing what I'm saying. That there was a pastor in Polokwane. Oh, he's still there. This man, he, he, he has never in his life said that I am broke. And for the greatest part, the greatest time or part of his life, the man was broke. He would say, I don't have money with me now. No, he refused to say, I, he cannot acknowledge that. Says, I don't have money with me now. He will call you and say, man, borrow me 1,000 because I don't have money with me now. <laughs> when I have it, I'll give you. And you think that is just a simple statement and he's, he's speaking prophetically. You will give him and he'll pay you in five years later. The man refused to acknowledge. Many of us, we acknowledge the bad things that are happening in our lives. Listen to me. Anything negative that you acknowledge, you expand it. If you say that my problems, they will never end, you will always live in problems. It will be one chaos after the other. It will be one mess after the other. Pick it up one more time. It will be one trouble after the other. So God says, acknowledge every good thing that is in you. Those good things are already in you. Those blessings are already in you. Those miracles are already in you. Oh my God. In other words, everything that you want is in you. The breakthrough you want is in you. Even God lives on the inside of you. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. The power of God is on the inside of you. The entire cabinet of heaven is on the inside of you. God says, begin to acknowledge that Jesus is on the inside of me. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Begin to acknowledge that the power that rose Jesus from the dead dwelleth inside of you. Begin to acknowledge every good thing that is inside of you. Am I talking to people this morning? Child of God, you are a heifer. You are not a lecker. You lack nothing. There is nothing shorting in your life. There is nothing missing in your life. Provisions and appropriations. My goodness, Christianity is a journey of appropriating the things that God has provisioned for you. Am I talking to somebody? No person should start a new job and you have to buy a laptop for yourself. It's part of the package. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. It is part of the package. During Corona days, during a hard lockdown, when we were not allowed to move, my work laptop got broken. Oh my God. And I called them, I'm like, guys, I cannot work. I don't have a laptop. The thing is broken. They never said to me that go to game and buy a new one. My goodness, they had to make a plan of creating a permit that I'm an essential worker. I was not an essential worker. They had to make sure that they organize whatever that needs to be organized with the laws and the police stations. My goodness. And make it a point that they go and purchase a new laptop for me. 
and when all was ready they gave me a call that come my goodness to the office and pick up your new laptop am I talking to somebody it's part of the package oh my god the salvation you have received was a package you were never told <laughs> oh my god oh yeah, bye, yeah, bye, yeah, bye, yeah. When, when you got born again you received the package and in this package there is healing in this package there is deliverance in this package there is breakthrough in this package there are miracles in this package there are open doors but here is my question today my goodness, are you just satisfied with being born again and going to heaven and let go of the things that are part of the package oh my god i want the whole package oh my god i want the whole package I, I, am i talking to somebody i shake a neighbor say i want the whole package uh, that was the wrong neighbor get the other neighbor say i want the whole package oh my god oh my god it's like getting a company car Oh my God, but you still drive your own to work. Uh, the devil is a liar. I pack my own and I take the company thing and I will drop it like nobody's business because it's not my own. Uh, am I talking to somebody? Somebody shout hallelujah. So when you got born again, this was a package. And today I came to challenge you that it is time to appropriate the things that are in the package. I want my healing devil and I want it now. This cancer leaves my body now. This asthma leaves my body now. This kidney failure leaves my body now. I want my healing and I want it now. I want to see my healing. By his stripes I was healed. Every part of my body is healed. I want it now. Somebody shout hallelujah. It's a package. Ah, oh my God. Find, find five people and tell them that it's a package. Give them a high five. Say, Makelwani, this thing is a package. Oh my God, this thing is a package. This thing is a package. A mega full blaster. This thing is a package. I get the other one. Say, this thing is a package. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. This thing is a package. Hey, this thing is a package. I thought this thing is a package. This thing is a package. To, to, today, I came here to challenge some people. Oh my God, that it's time you develop a holy anger. I, I refuse mediocrity. Oh my God, I refuse smallness. I refuse to be small. I refuse smallness in every area of my life. Everything Jesus has provided, I want it. I want all the provisions of redemption. I want them everywhere. I want them upon my kids. I want them in my bank account. I want them in my wardrobe. I want them in my parking garage. I want them in my bank account. I want them everywhere. It's a package. It's a package. And somebody's not understanding what I'm saying. You see, the Bible says it this way in the book of Hebrews that a will or a testament cannot come into effect if the testator is still alive. In other words, if somebody writes you a will, you cannot take anything they've written on the will as they're still alive. As long as they're still breathing, the will is not in force. The testament, the will is a testament. <laughs> the New Testament is a will. Uh, these are the words of Paul. The New Testament is a will. Jesus wrote in the will, give them the businesses. Give them the signature jobs, as they said. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God. Give them the houses around the corner as they've said. <laughs> Somebody's not feeling the preach. Jesus was writing. Give them the healing, the deliverance, the kidneys, the whatever that they want. Give them, give them, give them, give them. I, Jesus, I seal it by my blood. Do you know why Jesus needed to die? Because the will cannot come into effect if the writer is still alive. So the son of God, he had to go to the cross. They whip him all along. They pierce him. They pierce him on the side. They spit on him. And he died. Because the will could not go into effect when he was still alive. Oh my God. And he said, I gotta die so that the will can come into effect I gotta die my God 
because I want the weed. Hear me and hear me by the Holy Ghost. When he was dying, it was about the weed. Oh my God, it was about the weed. He wanted you to be able to claim. You could not say by his stripes you are healed if he was never beaten and put stripes upon his body. Oh my God, you could never say by his death I come alive if he never died. So when they were killing him, they thought they were destroying a man. Little did they know they were putting a will into effect. So child of God, as I close, the will is in effect. Oh my God, shake a neighbor. Say the will is in effect. I think that is the wrong neighbor. Get a neighbor with faith. Say the will is in effect. I'll get the other one. Say the will is in effect. I said the will is in effect. That is why now we can pray. That is why now Rebatu Retsiba Leho The will is in effect. Am I talking to somebody? That is why now we are saved. We are better people. Oh my God. The will is in effect. Oh my God. The will is in effect. Am I talking to somebody? The will is in effect. Others are wondering why, why, why does it seem like God is only blessing him? He's only blessing him. No, no, no. The will is in effect. Am I talking to somebody? I am claiming the things that belong to me. And child of God, today you gotta go and claim the things that belong to you. Oh my God, refuse to accept mediocrity. Refuse to accept the small corner that the devil gives you. Somebody shout hallelujah. So it is already done. Everything concerning your life is already done. Let me give this to you before we pray. Oh my God. I need two people quickly because I need to demonstrate this. Oh my God, I, I, I need you to make sure on the camera that you're able to capture them. I need one here and one beside. Oh my God, can you hold something? Maybe take two microphones there. So he holds them this side. You give him the microphone. Both, both the microphones. Now I need you to hold them in such a way that they can be visible. Yeah, perfect. This is the spiritual realm. This is the physical realm. You, you are blessed with all spiritual blessings. God has done all these things, but they are in the spirit. But where do you live in South Africa? In the physical. So you live in the physical, but the things are where? The healing is, the Range Rover is, the house in Santan, in the East Rand, West Rand, whichever Rand you prefer. Yeah, there are many Rands in East Rand, North Rand, whatever Rand. In the spiritual. But you live in the physical. <laughs> now, I need these things here. Yeah. I can't drive this Range Rover in the spirit. I live here in Midland. I need it here. I want to drive it on new road. Now, here is the challenge. Your mind is in between the spiritual and the physical. These things, they need to flow through your mind. So when your mind is full of negativity, bring, bring the things, bring the things. The things were coming, come, 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 yeah. And find that, yay, 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 negativity. They turn, turn back. They, 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 begin, they, they cannot pass here. The reason why the Bible says that be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind is because there are things which need to pass here. And, and they can't pass in negativity. That, that is why you gotta know that things have been provided, things are yours, and you gotta acknowledge them so that these things can be able to pass. So the problem is here. The problem is not here. The promotion is there. The healing is there. The problem is right here. We need to renew this and plant the word of God. That it's already provided. 
And when we say it's already provided, Philemon 1 6, you are acknowledge. Begin to acknowledge. Say it's provided. Say my healing is provided. Now, when you acknowledge, no, 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 let us go. This is what happens. This is what happens. Acknowledge. Say it's provided. Say it's provided. When they say it's provided, you take more step. Say it's provided. This is you pray. You've been praying for six months saying it's provided. Say it's provided. Eight months is provided. Thirteen months is provided. Yeah, now you can collect. All of a sudden, all of a sudden. Hey! Hey, 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 hey. Hey, the God of this church. No! You changed your confession. You are acknowledging. You are acknowledging. You are acknowledging. So the power is in acknowledging. Somebody said it's already provided. That's what Deuteronomy 17, 717. God says that if you say that these nations are bigger than I, how can I dispossess them? When you refuse to acknowledge, things cannot pass here. Your mind is a bridge. So you can never say your mind is a bridge. Thank you, gentlemen. God bless you. Clap hands for them as they are going to sit down. Church, your mind is a bridge. And what God was doing today, he was dealing with your mind. He was planting the truth of his word in your mind. That begin to acknowledge. Philemon 1.6, acknowledge. Paul says that the, the communication of your faith may be effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in Christ. Somebody be up on your feet. And I want us to go and pray in these three minutes of my time that is remaining. I want to go and acknowledge the one thing that you want in life. Listen to me. The thing that you are looking for has already been provided for. Now, I want you to approach God with understanding that this thing has been provided. And wh wh what I'm doing, I'm not forcing God to give it to me. He has given me already. I'm just acknowledging. Somebody shout, I'm just acknowledging. Bend, I need you to come. Open up your mouth and begin to pray. Uh, begin to acknowledge. Shada bahasa. Rada bahasha mandi bahasha kapaya. Minda barus kata kapashunde baha. Ende bereke bashu kaparo sakapaya. Shada basu kamani bahasa kapa.